Howdy folks, Congo here, and today we're going to be talking about the Kaga. This is the Tier 8 Premium Japanese Aircraft Carrier. This is the final episode of Simple Guides for Japanese Carriers. Uh, in the Mainline series, we talked about the Tech Tree Carriers, and in today's episode, we're going to be talking about the Premium Aircraft Carrier. We're going to be talking about the aircraft, uh, equipment, commander skills, and then I'll be taking it into a random battle and showing you how I would play it. So with that, let's begin. <clears throat> to start, we're going to be talking about the equipment. Now, the Kaga is a Tier 8 carrier, and what makes her aircraft special is she actually uses down-tiered aircraft. This means that her aircraft are Tier 7. Uh, if I remember correctly, they're actually the stock aircraft on the Shikaku, which is the standard tech tree variant. Um, so this means that they are Tier 7, so they're slower, they have less health, um, than the normal counterparts at this tier. <clears throat> but to compensate for that, you have a lot of them. And I mean a lot of aircraft to start the game with. If we look at this, you've got 24 attack aircraft, 36 torpedo bombers, and 36 dive bombers. This means you have a lot of starting aircraft and a lot of endurance if you manage to keep those planes alive. Um, the rep uh, recovery time on them is, is alright, it's pretty standard, um, but the main gimmick of the COG is down-tiered aircraft, but a lot of them. Uh, so that's kind of the aircraft, and that's, that's something to know about, is, like, when you get up tier to tier 10, you are going to be shredded. Like, you will not even be able to strike some groups of ships that, in other carriers, you might be able to get one strike off. Just because your planes are slower and have less health... That means a big difference, especially when you're bottom tier. Uh, as for upgrades, uh, air groups modification one, in aircraft engines modification one, two pretty standard upgrades. Uh, aerial torpedo modification one, uh, this bumps the torpedo speed up to a blistering 53 knots. Um, and then I have torpedo bomber modification two. Uh, it's really personal preference if you want uh, torpedo bomber or dive bomber modification. Um, because the other unique thing about the Kaga is that she is the only Japanese carrier, as of me saying this, she is the only Japanese carrier in the game that has high access to high explosive dive bombers. Her dive bombers are high explosive, whereas all of the Japanese carriers, they feature armor piercing dive bombers. She is high explosive dive bombers. So, with that being said... You could go with sort of like an Americanist carrier kind of thing where you use torpedo bombers to set floods and then dive bombers to set fires. And you might want the extra um, dive bomber health to kind of give you that, that time to come in and drop the dive bombers. Um, personally, I use the torpedo bombers. Um, the reason being is that Kaga actually drops four torps in a wave. And what this means is, is that if you land all four, you have incredible torpedo alpha strike uh, with four torps in the drop. Combined with the pretty high flood chance of the Japanese carriers, they're the second highest in the game in terms of aerial torpedoes. Um, this means that you can set floods pretty, pretty reliably and pretty easily. Um, so I like to buff them even more because the torpedo bombers are kind of your your main damage source the dive bombers are nice and you could definitely buff them with uh the hp if you wanted to and that way you could come and set fires but for me it's use the torpedo bombers do as much damage and then if you can come in and set fires with the dive bombers go for it um also because the dive bombers are high explosive you can just drop destroyers which is useful and then for the final upgrade slot, I'm using Concealment Modification. This just drops your Concealment to an incredibly stealthy 11 kilometers. But this also means uh, that your your planes are affected by Concealment Module. Uh, and in the case of the Japanese carriers, oops, wrong thing. Uh, and in the case of the Kaga in this case, this drops your Torpedo Bomber's Concealment down to 6.7. Which means that your planes aren't spotted until you're 6.7 kilometers away from a target. Which, in some cases, means that you are already in your attack run and are lining up the strike by the time your your aircraft are spotted. So that's helpful to, to have. Um, but mostly it's for the, the concealment on the actual carrier itself. Um, you're a 
fairly quick uh, carrier, but your turning circle's huge, so it's going to be hard to dodge uh, if you do get spotted. And if you if you want to push closer and, and use those large aircraft strikes that you have, concealment just helps with that. As for commander skills, uh, I'm this is the kind of build I would use specifically for the Kaga. Now, as a premium carrier, Kaga can use any Japanese carrier captain. Any carrier captain you want. Uh, but for a special build for the Kaga, this is what I would run. Uh, so for the first point, I have Last Gasp. You could take Air Supremacy, but because you have such massive reserves of aircraft on the Kaga, I feel that you don't need the servicing time as much if you're not being super wasteful with your planes. If you're not being super wasteful with the planes, you're always going to have aircraft. And Last Gasp just gives you more value in that case because both your torpedo bomber squadrons and your dive bomber squadrons are 4x12. So you have three waves of 12. So if you pre-drop a wave, like in the early game, then once you get one strike off, you have last gasp to come back and, and use the boost to, to make another strike. Or you can get one strike, two strikes, last gasp, maybe a third strike, or to boost away from the enemy so that you can recall your planes without losing more. Uh, because they are down-tiered, uh, that, that lower speed and lower health means that they might not escape if you just F recall them on top of an aircraft. Uh, so with that in mind, I actually have Last Gasp as my first point. Followed by Improved Engines, uh, Aircraft Armor, Proxy Fuse, because you are Japanese, your two torpedo bombers do hit very hard, uh, then Survivability Expert, and then I would come back and take Torpedo Bomber, and then uh, Bomber Flight Control, because again, you have high explosive dive bombers, so being able to come in, strike a target, set them on fire after you force their repair with a flood is is still pretty useful uh and then following that with the uh the last points i would probably put them into repair specialist this just keeps your torpedo bombers alive longer when you use the repair because again they are tier seven they are weaker and because you have so many torpedo bombers you're more likely to be able to use the extra heal or, or all of the heals with mostly or full squadrons near the mid to late game if you're conserving your aircraft so this is the kind of build i would take on the kaga um for the two point skills and i've mentioned this in previous videos um you would take both of these skills torpedo bomber and improved engines but because the japanese torpedo bombers actually have quite a massive arming time uh you could take torpedo bomber first and then come back and take improved engines or take improved engines and then come back and take torpedo bomber it, it, it doesn't matter in which order you take them you're going to take them both it's more personal preference do you want the the shorter arming time or do you want the faster plane speed overall uh that is more of a personal preference and how you feel like playing personally i take the improved engines first so that is kind of like a special build for the kaga and what i would take on the kaga um now in this case i'm actually going to take a different commander uh i'm actually going to take my haku captain uh which is a bit different uh but it's still very similar the only real difference between this captain and my actual kaga captain is i have uh enhanced reactions instead of dive bomber control and i actually have air supremacy because for my haku um but this is more just to uh get a bit more exp to get uh him to 21 points um, and then for signals, I'm running heel flag and then the DOT flags. Uh, because again, you have dive, high schools of dive bombers and torpedo bombers. Having a higher chance to set fires and floods is just helpful. And then you can take economic and whatever. And then for the other combat flags, just take whatever you want. Flood, uh, consumable AA, it doesn't matter. I should mention though that her uh, secondary guns, she has quite a few of them. Uh, they're fairly short range and they reload really slow, but they actually hit deceptively hard. Uh, so you could take like a secondary flag, but I wouldn't recommend it. All right, so let's get into a battle. Um, I, again, as a tier eight carrier, I've mentioned this with the Lexington and the Shikaku guide. As a tier eight carrier, you're more likely to get up tiered into tier ten, um, which is painful for all carriers, but a Especially the Kaga. Um, the Kaga is kind of a double-edged sword in that <clears throat> you have so many plane reserves that losing planes to tier 210 AA 
isn't as painful, but it also means that you're more likely to lose all of the planes before you get the strike even in, especially in the early game when most of the ships are clumped together. Um, so we're actually mid-tier this game. Uh, it is a 789 on Neighborhood, so that's not bad. That That's actually favorable. Um, they do have some pretty scary. Georgia's pretty scary. NC's going to be super annoying. Siegfried, yeah, kind of. Baltimore, definitely. And then for destroyers, they don't have too much scary. Um, no Shishimi has defensive, so if he uses that, we'll just to back off and wait for it to go on cooldown. But overall, his base values aren't massively scary. Uh, so, pretty good match, pretty decent matchmaking. Uh, we'll have to see where the enemy goes. If they stay grouped together, uh, it's going to be pretty annoying for us because, again, we have tier 7 aircraft and. When the enemy is grouped together and really clustered together, they can tread our planes very easily and limit the number of strikes. But if one of, like, the Leon or the Francesco or even the Heisen, you know, if some of them get isolated, we could strike them. Um, we could, I suppose, strike the enemy, Shikaku, uh, but on this map, eh, probably not a good idea. Um, maybe if they leave the center line open, we could try and go for a carrier snipe, but generally speaking it's it's not usually ideal to go for the carrier uh it just is going to take far too long to kill them and it's just generally not worth it unless you literally have no other targets then maybe you can apply a little bit of pressure to the enemy carrier oh we found the nurse Trishimi. and our fighters actually just killed the enemy fighters which means we can turn this way and start the attack and slow down uh because japanese uh, attack aircraft. If you have a rather long arming time, you do need to kind of know, know and preemptively kind of start to line it up before you uh, go in. Otherwise, they're not going to be armed in time. He's got a little bit of chip damage on him. His A is actually not on, so we can actually go for this third strike, even with the plane almost dead. If he does turn his AA on, though, we're going to lose his plane, but he's actually not. And we missed, unfortunately. Um, it is a Noshishimi, though. And one of the gimmicks of the Noshishimi is that it has a super heal. Um, so I don't expect a lot of that damage to stick right now. But any any chip damage on a, on a destroyer is, is good. So we're going to take torpedo bombers. going to scout uh, on A side. It is a cyclone, actually, which is actually pretty good for us. Uh, cyclones are actually really good for carriers. Uh, for most ships, it's bad for that because you can't use the range of most ships to strike. But for psych uh, for carriers, Cyclone's actually pretty good because that means your planes aren't spotted until you're basically right on top of them. Now, this does, does kind of apply to your plane spotting the ship. You're not going to spot the ship until you're right on top of them. But <clears throat> if you have a pretty good idea of where the ship is, um, generally speaking, it, it's not the end of the world. And it looks like the enemy team is actually doing a full lemming to see... BC, um, whereas my team is doing a uh, mostly full lemming to A side, which is not ideal on this map. You don't want to um, you don't want a lemming to uh, one cap, especially A side on this map because C side has so much cover. And we actually just spotted the enemy Shikaku, um, so we're actually going to strike him. Uh, I know I just said don't. Like, it's not ideal, but we don't really have too many targets at the moment. And if we can actually kill him early, that's super good for my team. So I'm holding my repair on my aircraft until the fighter shoots them. And I actually got to keep one alive. Unfortunately, I didn't get the drop off in time, and the heal wasn't strong enough to uh, stop the fighters from killing two of the planes. Uh, but we do have the Shikaku uh, spotted. Maybe one of our battleships can strike him. Although I don't think any of them have range at the moment, which is kind of unfortunate. So, a little bit of chip damage on him. Um, at the moment, we don't really have <clears throat> too many other targets to strike. The NC, the battleships are all kind of huddled together. Um... And we've got this huge push on A that is achieving nothing because there's nobody there. We've known, we know there's nobody there. 
nobody's been spotted there for quite some time. And we just lost our destroyer at, at Seaside. <clears throat> so this is actually pretty bad for us. Um, I think this NC is looking like the next target we're going to strike. It looks like she's slowed down. Uh, she's actually reversing at the moment. So she's going to be our next target. Because uh, she's actually slowing and she's reversing and trying to angle against my team coming from uh, ACAP. So we're going to torp her, try and slow her down. We're actually spotted by Shikaku's torpedo bombers. That's fine. And I'm actually going to take dive bombers out. We land all four and a flood. So now I'm going to come in with dive bombers to try and maybe set a fire on her. Does she repair? She did, in fact, repair the, uh, the flood, which is actually really good for us, because now we can set a fire. And, in fact, she's actually pretty low on health, so we might actually just outright kill her if she takes some more damage. Sick creep went down. That's good. Monaghan went down. That's actually really good for us. Okay, so Noshishimi just got spotted, so there's nothing in B-cap at the moment. B cap is completely open for us. Um, Chicago's gonna drop fighters on the NC, but I don't think it's fast enough for us to get a strike. If we're quick about this, I'm gonna drop there, maybe get two. Only one, but it's something. And that's a perm fire right there. The NC can't repair that fire for another probably 30, 35 seconds or so. Um, so that will tick for some time. Uh, and she just used her heal as well. So, we'll see what her HP is when we come back. Uh, if it's low, we might just let her burn to death and, or our team kill her and might go for the Francesco. Uh, let's see. Still got quite a bit of health. My team isn't focusing her as much as I would like, so... I am actually gonna just go ahead and strike her because she's moving forward, so the venom torpedoes aren't gonna hit either. Um, oh, and as I say that, the Roma just blasts her. So with that, I'm gonna go strike this Francesco, especially because he actually just grounded himself uh, on the islands right here. actually quite the, the prime target for uh for us right now and i'm actually gonna try and get a second strike we just broke his engine as well nice a flood and a broken engine so he's got to repair that and he in fact did just repair it uh because he, he couldn't leave that i'm actually gonna take two the bombers again and that's two more hits so we've, we've essentially crippled the, the Francesco. I don't want to hit the friendly Roma with my torpedo bombers. Um, that's something you do need to keep in mind when you're pre-dropping, is you do need to be mindful of what your torpedo range is, uh, so that you don't accidentally torpor friendly. Because uh, I have done that before, and it's kind of embarrassing. So this Francesco is pretty pretty caught against the rocks still uh and he's actually just took a huge hit from one of our battleships so i think i'm just gonna come in and make sure he goes down uh i could leave him to like the roma for example but i want to make sure he goes down uh because he is a uh italian he could use his smoke screen uh because the italians do get a full full screen uh full speed smoke screen and we don't want him to get away because he could pop that and you know by some miracle he could pop that and make a hard turn and get away and we just we don't want to risk it so it's better just to make sure he goes down and in this case we made sure he went down uh and i'm gonna just use these last two torpedo bombers on the shikaku just apply a little bit more pressure to her drop them from far she is turning in so i, I doubt they will hit her but just in case you never know and i'm actually gonna move my hull a little bit closer uh, actually, I'm gonna move it here. Um, because the cyclone is in effect, which means visibility for ships is 8 kilometers. Uh, so that means we can be way more closer than we normally could be. 
So I'm going to move my carrier to the edge, basically, there. So that my plane turnaround time is a lot shorter. And I'm going to try and go into this group of ships here and see if maybe we can get rid of their BD. If not, pester some of these larger ships. Like this buffalo who's currently sitting in a smoke screen. Oh, there's way too much AA though. And we just lost all of our planes to that AA. Might tag the uh, Baltimore with a torp. He was stationary in that smoke screen. I'm not sure if he'll have enough time to actually move forward. Now I see the Nostrashimi is actually pushing forward, so I'm actually uh, to the other side of, of the B cap. Ooh, Georgia. I'm actually gonna go for the Georgia. Oh, that's a lot of data. Yeah. And this this is kind of the problem of yeah. There there's just so much concentrated AA that it's really hard to strike. And especially with the recent changes that we're giving me to Flak, Flak is so accurate now. And especially because you have tier seven aircraft, it's so easy for your squadron to eat a random Flak first that you think you dodged, but the game is like, actually you didn't. And you end up just losing all your planes. Um, I'm gonna torque this Georgia though, because I do want her, I don't want her to kill our uh, Roma right now. I'm gonna try and kill her. Uh, we did kill her. I'm gonna drop torps on. Uh, gonna drop torps on the uh, smoke screen. I might hit the cruiser. I might hit the destroyer in it. And I'm actually going to slowly back away because I think that Kidda is actually coming right for me, and that is bad. There's a Chapai up there. Down. Oh, we just lost our cruiser. RNG said no. They killed the, uh... The destroyer, at least, or the cruiser, at least. So their AA is not as good here. They still do have an Ashishimi, though, to defensive me. We are kind of just resetting the cap for the most part. Um, yeah. I think this uh, kid has realized that I am, like, right here. Oh, my entire team is dead. Well. Uh, and there's the Nurse Shishimi super heal we were talking about earlier. Unfortunately, the whole team collapsed, and when this happens, there's not a lot you can do. Now we're just being bum-rushed by two destroyers, and there's not a whole lot we can do about that. Um, try and cook this, uh, uh, this kid. Uh, I'm not sure if she's paying attention or not. Ah, it doesn't look like she is. She's gonna eat one. Yep, she too. 
God, Nier Shishimi killed us. Unfortunate. Unfortunately, that's just kind of the, the way with carriers sometimes, you know. Uh, the team just kind of went to one cap, which was in this case was A cap, and on this map, it's really hard to push into B and into C because the enemy team has cover on the islands. And because they were staying so grouped together, we couldn't really do much. Um, we, we tried. We did as much damage as we could. We tried to make the influence. But unfortunately, we just couldn't stop our team from, from making a bad uh, positional error. And we couldn't punish the enemy too hard. We were able to catch the ships that were down there and kill them quickly. But overall, we weren't able to, to win the game. So... 91k damage. Uh, we were top of the team this game, which kind of shows you just what our team was not doing. Um, so, gave it our best. So, that is the Kaga. Uh, if you like what I'm doing, give a like, hang around, and uh, I will see you next time.